everyone. Welcome to another Coaching Wisdom Pod. We have Les Watson with us. He is founder at Creating Success Coaching and also at Get More Time. So we're going to talk mostly about my time management today and productivity and who knows, enjoying a bit more of life. That'd be fun. Once you have more time, you have more life. Uh, you can find us on founderwisdompodcast.com. And if you want to start or scale your own podcast, you can go to podpire.com, which is my own podcasting agency. Podcasts are great if you want to learn, if you want to meet new people, if you want to generate leads and clients. So podpire.com for that. Les, Les, welcome to the pod. Can you tell me a bit more about yourself and CSC and uh, GMT? <laughs> It's great to be here, Charles. Um, I have these two businesses, Get More Time and Cranic Success Coaching, and the Get More Time was founded and Cranic Success came out of it during COVID. Uh, it wasn't something new. It was something I had in my kit bag from oh, 30 years ago, and uh, you know you need to be inventive when COVID hits. So I said, what have I got in my kit bag? And uh, I've got this program, why don't I bring it back? And I put it out to an email list and people jumped on board and then they jumped on board again and then they jumped on board again and I went, oh, I think I've got something here. So it started out of uh, out of that, but again, get more time is all around productivity and time management and it's about if you're breathing, you need more time. You need to be able to manage your time. And people say, yeah, but your book get back an hour in every day. Is that about getting 25 hours in a day? No, it's about using the 24 that you have and being able to create what it is that you're after. You mentioned something, Charles, it's like get more life, have more life, do more life. And that's what it's about. You don't get more time to do nothing with it. You actually mm. get more time to do something with it. What do you want? Where are you going? Where are you headed? What impact are you having in the world? And uh, I'll get further on a little bit later. I'll talk about two things, leadership and discipline. But uh, it's about leading your life and creating the life that you want. All right. And is that about some time hacks that you have? How does one create more time and create more efficiency? Yes. And a lot of it's to do with how you are uh, interacting with your day. What are the systems you've got in place? What are the things that you've got thinking about? What are you thinking about? What What are you saying to yourself as you go through your day? So I have a model and it's the easy model and it's external action for EA. What are you doing in your day? Then what support are you asking for? And the other side of that coin is, are you supportable? Because some people in a hole have people come around and go, can I give you a hand? And they go, no, 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 Charles, I'm fine. Leave me alone. There's nothing wrong with me. And yet everybody knows they're in a hole. So if you're in a hole, one of the things is awareness, just being aware that you're stuck, that you don't have the time, that you're not getting stuff done, that may be less than the quality that you want and allowing people around you to help. And obviously the flip side of that is asking for help. Excuse me, Charles, I don't suppose you've got uh, some time to help me with this. And Charles goes, yes or no. It's not every day that someone will go, yes, I can give you a hand. Maybe they'll say no, but I don't then give up and say, oh, nobody loves me. Everybody hates me. I'll go and eat worms. I go, who's the next person? And go and ask somebody else and that's somebody else and somebody else and somebody else. So support is available to you if you just look for it. So EA for external action, support. And the last one is why, which is yes, which is your internal focus. Are you more focused on what's working rather than what's not working? Are you focused on the positive rather than the negative? Are you saying to yourself you can do it rather than you can't do it, that it's easy rather than hard? So that internal focus is a huge one. And, and people kind of go, yeah, but that doesn't make, much sense really surely it can't be that easy well it is and you can play it out on a lot of uh, sporting examples for example your golfer your golfer doesn't address the ball and hit the ball 
He addresses the ball and then steps away and does a practice swing. In his own mind, he's going, this is the way I would like it to be. So they're practicing a positive outcome as opposed to the person that doesn't do that and they're focused on the negative. For example, I always hit these in the lake, I always hit these in the lake, I always hit these in the lake, and the ball goes in the lake. So how does that relate to time management? Well, you put the three together and you go, what action am I taking today to create the stuff that I want in the time that I've got? What support do I have around me that in doing so enables me to get what I need done? And am I focused on this being done or am I focused on the obstacles? Am I more positive than negative? So that easy model really does create a lot of momentum for people to move them in the right direction. Mindset. Yeah, that's pretty basic. Um, for my CEOs, though, that are like high level people, automation, I, I guess, and setting up bots that can do stuff for you and acting more as a chef d'orchestre right, rather than an executioner and using tools like AI that can constantly solve uh, their problem and, and thinking in terms of what bots can I set up rather than what human can I hire for that? What do you think about these models? There's nothing wrong with bots. I always bring it back to what are you doing? So for you to set up the bots, what are you doing? So it's not about the bots. People ask me, what what's the best time management system? I said, it's not about the best. It's about the system that you use. Because a lot of people dabble around a system and never get into it, never press into it, never actually get into the nitty gritty of it to make it work for them. So I always say, it's not about the automation. It's about the person behind the automation because you can have the best automation in the world and not be able to fulfill it or not be able to set it up. So it comes back to the individual. And I'm all for automation. There's nothing wrong with automation whatsoever. Happy for people to automate, but how's your life outside of the automation? Are you keeping your agreements? Are you on time for your meetings? Are you distracted by the distractions of life? Are you spending too much time on social media? Are you spending too much time in meetings? Those sorts of things mean a lot. And it takes someone external to tap you on the shoulder and say, have you thought about? It? So happy to have automation, Charles, not a, not a problem. I guess you're talking about IQ and planning here. Making up a good plan is hard. Making a good plan is also dependent on the quality of your execution and how much experimentations you put out there. It's hard to make a good plan. And statistically speaking, apart from genetics and uh, biohacking and how you enhance your brain, I guess it's just trying a bunch of plans, hundreds of them, maybe have three succeed. So because you can put all your efforts in one niche, let's say in business that will not work. And you'll spend 10,000 hours uh, working in, in a direction that is not the right one, but you might find a niche that has a huge product market fit. That niche uh, will generate a bunch of money. If you're lucky, you'll complete your Ikigai also. So it, ideally it needs to be in the, the Ikigai bubble because you'll have fun while doing it and it won't become a job. And, Free time won't even matter at this point because you'll be doing something that you like and that'll make you happy. But is that a fair assumption? And how does the experimental mindset um, is part of the productivity equation in your opinion? Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying and agree. It does come down to the individual being willing to risk. There's no use being safe. And I... <laughs> I, I I happen to like some some games and some puzzles. And what I find is in making a mistake in a puzzle it will enable me to make a right choice after the mistake. But too many people go, well, I can't make a mistake. I'm not allowed to. Or I got chastised for making a mistake as a child. Or my first boss chastised me. Therefore, I am risk averse. It's like if I don't make a mistake, I won't be... Um, be put down. Whereas for entrepreneurs, for CEOs, for leaders, it's about making a mistake, getting the feedback and moving on from, from that to create what it is you're after. So it's not necessarily having to do 
40 different things. It may be three things, but it's at least stepping out of your own comfort zone into risking something that you've not done before and seeing if it works. So Charles, the, the world has shifted away from paper into digital, and yet there are some that still work with paper as far as their own productivity. And I was working with an executive recently where they said, are you giving me permission to go back to paper? And I said, yeah, she said, great, because this particular app doesn't work for me. So she went out, she got herself a paper planner and her productivity skyrocketed because she was working with the right system. And that can work the same with apps. If you're working with the right productivity app, it will boost your productivity. But if you're working with the wrong productivity app, you need to be willing to let go of what's not working and explore something that is working. That's why I g gather people around me and go, what's the system that you're using? What are you currently using? So what's the bot that you're using? What's the AI that you're using? What's the code that you're using that enables you to get that? So in that regard, it, it enables me to get support from people around me as opposed to me being stuck in my own world. So my formula seems to be one, Ikigai. Second, making the most money with the fewest energy expansion, scientifically and scalably with this um, experimental method we just talked about while growing in all life areas, 1% daily. And I mean, my professional life right now is 70% of my life. So that would be that part. It has been at some point, 50% of it. Um, grinding hard nowadays and the rest of that life I'd have another formula which is probably it's not necessarily maximizing happiness I'd like going for scale um, I like to sacrifice my present for the future and so far so good what do you think about that formula I, I yep there's nothing wrong with that and there are some that are going to listen and watch and kind of go yeah I don't I, that doesn't fit for me and you've got to find what fits for you. So some people want to scale. Some people want to go heavy at it. Some people want to sacrifice today for tomorrow. And there are others that go, let me enjoy part of today so that I can make it to tomorrow. Because there's a big, 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 big percentage of burnout where for some people going hard at it doesn't work for them. Now, how does that play out in reality? Well, are you creating, are you disciplined enough to put the work in to create what it is that you're after? So one of the time management pieces that I have is around discipline. Are you willing to do what it is that it takes to create the result on an ongoing basis? And we're not talking today, tomorrow, and this week. And some people say, how long does it take to create a habit? Some would say 30 days. Well, actually, when they did the research, it wasn't 30 days. It was on average 66 days to create a habit. If it takes 66 days to create a habit, some as long as 250 and some as short as 15, but the average being 66, that's two months. That's two months of doing the grind of what you don't want necessarily want to do to see if it works. And the majority of time it will. It will work for you and you'll create a result from it, even if it doesn't work. It'll create a result that you can get feedback from and move on from. So are you a disciplined person? Well, I don't know. Well, did you get up this morning? Did you clean your teeth? Did you have breakfast? If it's not breakfast, did you have a coffee? Did you arrive at the scheduled point that you need to be on time? Those sorts of disciplines can be taken from your life and put into your own productivity if you choose it. It takes choice. So in the first of all, awareness and then discipline. Now, I mentioned it earlier about leadership. The only person to lead your life is you. The only person to lead your life is you. It's not a matter of turning around and go, Charles, can you lead my life for me? Because Charles goes, I've got my own life to lead. And the person beside you or the business partner or the employee, I need you to make these decisions. No, as something comes up, make a decision. And in the majority of times, you're going to be spot on with that decision. You didn't get to where you are by making shitty decisions. You made good decisions to get where you are, so keep going. 
So Charles believes in you. I believe in you. Keep going. There's number one. And number two is even if you make a mistake, that's okay. Because all of the great people in the world make mistakes. They're not perfect. I don't know of a perfect person. So in making mistakes, you can get the feedback from the mistake, course correct, and go again. As I mentioned earlier, it's not a matter of getting the feedback and sitting in the corner and just going, oh, I'm useless, I'm shocking, I should never have done this. You fall over, you get back up, dust yourself off and go again. Yeah, life is seasons. Um, I'm definitely coming to the end of that grind experiment. I have my wedding in a week and I'm going to have a good 10 days to sleep solid and so forth because I feel that my batteries are are really down nowadays. You know, it's too much grind. Um, and I'm glad I, I still made that experiment, you know, I'm super grateful for that. Um, but yeah, like 15 seals a day interview, that, that's quite intense. I want to know, uh, though, from you, like what's the percentage of planning vs execution because i think the ceos listening to this already have discipline uh, they've got no problem with that but they're probably wondering you know like how much execution is too much and is it 90 percent execution 10 percent planning should we plan every day should we review our stuff every day how frequently is questions that they might ask that's great 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 questions um and <laughs> People will, will ask, oh, is there a perfect number? There's no perfect number. Everybody moves and changes differently, but you need to look at, are you taking the time to plan? Are you taking the time? Yeah, but give me a number list. I'm giving you a number. It's not the way it works. But are you planning? So I have a thing called plan each day the day before. So as you leave the workspace, whatever your workspace is, at the last part of the day, then plan tomorrow. Make sure you know what's coming up. Make sure that you know the tasks you want to do. And that sounds really simple, but I'm going, if you don't do it as a regular thing, you will have gaps and you will fall over. So planning it today, the day before. Then get to the end of the week and do a weekly review. And I've got the weekly review from my mentor, David Allen, with uh, getting things done and the GTD methodology, where he was my mentor back in the 80s. And the weekly review is that opportunity at the end of the week. Um, you can do it on your own. You can say what worked this week, what didn't work this week, and what can I do differently next week to create a different result. If Charles and I were working together, it would be, so Charles, what worked for you? And then he'd ask me what worked for me, what didn't work for you, what didn't work for me, and what can we do differently to create a different result going forward. I have a, a weekly review as a, a dashboard and I have all my KPIs on that dashboard. So I can do that at the end of the week, populate that dashboard and show that to my business partner and go, here are the things that I need to be accountable on. Some are working, some aren't working and they can ask me questions. And what that does is enable me not to hide, enables me to be transparent, enables me to get feedback, enables me to get uh, feedback from another person around the thing of maybe my blind spots, the things that I don't notice. So when I'm working with somebody, I'll go, what did you do this week? Let's go through your calendar. What meetings did you have? What tasks did you do? And do a review of the week. And then I'll go forward and go, what about what's coming up next week? So that planning aspect of the day or the week is really important but then you extrapolate it out into what's coming up next month what's coming up the week the month after that where are you traveling to have you got all your ducks in a row so many people that i come in contact with go oh i haven't planned that or i haven't taken the time to do that and i'm saying to them that comes into planning so it's not a matter of a perfect number but are you taking the time at the end of the week number one to review the week and number two to look forward into the upcoming week and month so you can do your planning that way where can people find out more about you les i'm at getmoretime.com.au note the au so it's australian.com.au getmoretime.com.au or you can check me out at 
creatingsuccesscoaching.com.au. And you mentioned some things. I've got a giveaway that I can have people. It's a 25 time tips for busy people. So that's as simple as getmoretime.com.au forward slash time tips. All right. And I am Charles Cormier, host of founderwisdompodcast.com. I was Let's Les Watson. And you can find us on podpire.com if you want to start scale, be invited to podcast.